debit cards. How do they work? Debit cards are a relatively new facet of the world of payment options. They basically look and act like credit cards, but the funds are drawn directly from the cardholder's checking account rather than the issuing bank. When debit cards were first introduced, they were billed as plastic checks. Early debit cards could not be used the same way as credit cards. They were simply another payment option that could be used at physical stores with card swipe terminals. Debit card holders used a personal identification number, PIN, usually four digits, to authorise the purchase. Today, though these limited-use cards still exist, most people choose to receive a debit card that can be used as a credit card with signature-based transaction authorization. Debit cards with a Visa or MasterCard logo on the front are generally accepted anywhere credit cards can be used, including online. There are many reasons consumers choose credit-associated debit cards. These include the ability to pay for purchases anywhere Visa or MasterCard is accepted, easier than writing checks, automatic record of transactions provided in a monthly statement or through online account access, the ability to withdraw cash when paying for purchases at most stores and gas stations, provides credit card convenience for people with poor credit who can't get a traditional credit card. Spending limited to the balance of your checking account helps prevent overspending. When a buyer uses a debit card to make an online purchase, the process is nearly identical to that of credit cards. There are two slight differences. The funds are taken directly from the cardholder's personal checking account rather than the issuing banks. And the transaction is completed faster, one to three business days rather than three to five. The major drawback associated with debit cards is the fees involved in some transactions. Different issuing banks assess fees at different points during the transaction. These fees can include monthly fees, per transaction fees, cash withdrawal fees, merchant processing fees, usually charged by stores when a pin-based transaction is made. Additionally, Many credit-associated debit cards will authorise transactions when the checking account funds are insufficient to cover the purchase. In most cases, the cardholder, rather than the merchant, is responsible for the overdraft charges. How can you use them? Accepting debit card payments online is quite simple. If you have the capacity to accept credit cards, you can also accept any debit card that carries a Visa or MasterCard logo. You may have heard that merchant fees for accepting debit cards are lower with PIN-based transactions than with signature-based transactions. This is the case for brick-and-mortar establishments with card swipe terminals that allow cardholders to choose the debit or credit option. PIN-based transactions have not been made available for e-commerce. However, a Canada-based company called Use My Bank at www.usemybank.com has developed software that allows online buyers to pay for goods and services by accessing their checking accounts in real time, using the same process banks offer to pay bills online. The Use My Bank service is currently available only in Canada, but the company plans to expand their services to the United States and internationally. Provided enough banks agree to make this type of transaction available to their customers, this method may catch on. It is beneficial to merchants in that the funds are transferred immediately. Customers also benefit because merchants do not receive their banking information, making the service one of the most secure options available. Electronic funds transfer. What is it? Electronic funds transfer, EFT, is like a debit card transaction without the debit cards. EFT services are also referred to as an automated clearinghouse, ACH. This payment method transfers money directly from one checking account to another. All ACH services are associated directly with Federal Reserve Banks. It is a nationwide system used by merchants to collect payments from customers, transfer money between accounts, 
or offer automatic bill pay, an option used largely by utility, telephone and other communications-based companies. There is an added security with an ACH payment system as well. Only banks or financial corporations with bank guarantees are allowed to send and receive funds through the ACH network. This protects both merchants and consumers by ensuring against fraudulent or fly-by-night companies gaining access to financial information. Rather than charging a percentage of transactions, ACH service costs are based on the number of transactions, regardless of the dollar amount, a batch-oriented fee system. The rate decreases for businesses with large volumes of transactions. Additionally, there are lower charges for bounce checks through the ACH network. How does it work? The ACH network is one of the most reliable and efficient funds transfer systems in the United States. The system is governed by the operating rules of NACHA, the Electronic Payment Association, and each member bank adheres to their code of conduct and interbank clearing processes. For more information about NACHA, visit their website at www.natcha.org. There are four organisations that act as ACH operators, central clearing facilities for all ACH transactions. They are the American Clearing House Association, ACHA, the Federal Reserve, Fed ACH, the Electronic Payment Network, and Visa. Public sector transactions are all currently handled by the Fed ACH, which processes 85% of all transactions through the network. If you sign your business up to accept payments through ACH, you will be dealing with the Federal Reserve. For the most part, the Fed ACH handles repetitive retail payments and pre-authorised recurring payments. Repetitive retail payments include service items like gym memberships, online gaming accounts and website hosting services. If you have set up a recurring monthly bill to be taken directly from your checking account, this payment is authorised through the ACH network. A pre-authorised recurring payment refers to things like utility payments, insurance premiums, direct deposit payroll accounts and social security payments. Even if your business doesn't require customers to provide recurring monthly payments, you may still be interested in an ACH service for your business. This provides another automated payment option for people who do not have or want credit cards, or for those still leery of using a credit card online. Here is a look at the cycle and some of the terms associated with an ACH transaction. Presentment and return. When a bank or ACH processor submits a request for payment to the ACH system, it's called a presentment. The first time the request is submitted is called first presentment. Because ACH transactions are drawn from available funds in checking accounts, they can be returned if the balance is not enough to cover the payment. If the initial request is denied, the transaction is then called first presentment returned. Items can be resubmitted to the network and re-returned, just like paper checks. Unlike paper checks, however, there is no paper involved in an ACH transaction. There are a variety of terms commonly used to describe an ACH transaction, including truncated check, electronic draft, item, transaction, debit and simply check. The ACH transaction process Checks sent into the ACH network are processed through separate channels from paper check processing. The ACH network serves as the intermediary between your bank and your customers' banks, and all electronic items are processed through this clearinghouse. When a request for payment of an item is received by the ACH network, the funds are automatically deposited into your account and taken from the customers. If the funds are not available in the customer's account, the item will be returned to you for repayment and you will be assessed a return fee. You can then resubmit the item without new authorization from the customer. Terms used in ACH 
following are a few common terms used to define the different entities in an ACH transaction. Originator Any individual, merchant or corporation who initiates, sends items into the ACH network. Originating Depository Financial Institution, OFDI Any participating bank or financial institution that initiates, sends items into the ACH network at the request of its customers, your bank. Receiving Depository Financial Institution Any participating bank or financial institution that is qualified to receive, deposit items into its customers' accounts. The Check Writers Bank. Receiver. Any bank or financial institution that is qualified to receive, deposit, ACH items and abides by the operating rules and guidelines of Natcha. How can you use it? If your business bills customers on a monthly basis, an ACH payment solution is a good fit for your company. However, even if you do not have monthly recurring charges, you may still handle a large volume of transactions per month, which makes ACH a cost-effective method of accepting online payments from your customers. Your customers will also benefit through an ACH payment service. Many people find it convenient to have payments automatically deducted from their checking accounts, whether it is a one-time or a recurring payment. In general, ACH services will provide you with a link to a secure payment form, hosted on their website server, to handle transactions. There are several providers of ACH payment services, also referred to as electronic check services, available to you as an online merchant. Here are just a few of them. Electronic Clearinghouse Incorporated, ECHO, at wwwecho inc dot com slash check underscore services dot html etran incorporated at www.e-tran.net select payment processing at www.selectcheck.com checkmatic software products at www.checkmatic.com the more the merrier. Without a doubt, credit cards are the most popular option for making online purchases. However, this does not mean you should limit your payment options for your online store to credit cards, though you should definitely not leave this option out. If instant results is one of the most influential factors in an online consumer's purchasing decision, then a wide selection of choices is right up there with it. The more options you are able to offer your prospective buyers, the more likely they will be to find one that suits them and their needs as a consumer, and consequently buy from you. The best way for you to increase your online sales is to keep your options as open as possible. In addition to credit cards, be willing to accept debit cards, electronic checks, or even mail order purchases through paper checks or money orders. You can even establish a toll-free order number and allow faxed orders if you are truly driven to extend your range. Just don't attempt to accept handwritten IOUs or indentured servitude. A recent study by Cybersource Corporation indicates that websites that provide four or more payment methods in addition to credit cards boast a sales conversion rate, website visitors to buyers, that is an average of 12% higher than those offering credit card payments and one other option. This likely has as much to do with customer trust as the actual number of payment methods. If you're willing to accept multiple forms of payment, you're letting the customer know that you are trying to make their experience with your business as convenient as possible. Customers appreciate a company that will go the extra mile to ensure their satisfaction. You must make it easy for your visitors to make a purchase. For many people, the internet is a confusing enough place without having to navigate through new systems they may not have used before. For others who are proficient with using the internet, if you shatter their expectation of instant gratification, they will move on to your competitors, who probably accept credit cards. 
the methods. In this chapter, you will learn how comprehensive online credit card processing systems work and how to integrate them into your existing website or add them to a new website if you don't already have one. PayPal What is it? PayPal is an online payment system with a network of over 100 million users worldwide. Currently the most popular funds transfer service on the internet. PayPal allows businesses and individuals to transfer funds electronically between bank accounts and from credit or debit cards to bank accounts. Some of the common uses of PayPal's services include paying for online auctions. PayPal is owned by internet auction giant eBay. Purchase goods and services from online merchants. Make donations or good faith payments. Send cash to anyone with a PayPal account. A basic PayPal account is free. There are some fees associated with business accounts, but the good news for your customers is that they don't have to pay extra to make a purchase from you through PayPal. Anyone with a valid email address can sign up for PayPal's services. From there, any number of checking accounts and credit or debit cards can be linked to the account. If there is more than one checking account or card associated with the account, users are given the option to choose which one will be used for each purchase or payment. How does it work? For most businesses, a PayPal account acts as an intermediary between fund sources and bank accounts. When money is paid or transferred through PayPal, the funds reside in the PayPal account until you initiate a transfer to your checking account. Many online buyers, particularly those who frequent eBay, keep money in their PayPal accounts to make online spending easier. If you decide to accept PayPal payments for your business, the first thing you'll need to do is open an account. You can start with a basic account, but you'll want to upgrade to either a Premier or a business account as soon as possible. You can do this right from the start, or you can upgrade after your account is established. To sign up, go to the PayPal homepage and click on the Sign Up Now button. You will be given the option to open a personal, business or Premier account. I'll be telling you what each account type offers shortly. After you make your selection, you will be asked to enter some basic personal information. Name, address, telephone number and a valid email address. The address you sign up with will be associated with the account and customers can send you PayPal payments using this address. Once the sign-up process is complete and you have clicked on the link in your verification email to return to the PayPal website, you will be asked if you would like to add a checking account or credit card to your account. You will likely want to add your checking account. Once it is verified, PayPal will display the verification on the payment page your customers see. This builds trust and confidence for your business. When you enter your checking account information, PayPal will initiate two small deposits into your checking account, usually between 5 and 15 cents. The confirmation process involves checking your bank statements and entering these exact amounts at the PayPal website, which tells PayPal that you actually own the account. Once your checking account is verified, you can electronically transfer any PayPal funds received at no charge. The transfer process usually takes three to four business days. If you don't want to transfer funds into your checking account or you want occasional faster access to your PayPal account, you can apply for a free PayPal debit card or business visa, which can be used anywhere credit cards are accepted. The PayPal card draws from your account. The credit card is a regular visa with a PayPal logo added. What is the difference between the types of PayPal accounts available? Here is what each one involves. A personal account is free to open and has no monthly fees. You can send and receive money. You can shop online with eBay and merchants who accept PayPal. A Premier account has all the features of a personal account plus eBay tools and merchant services. 
and you can accept credit, debit and bank account payments. The business account has all the features of the Premier account. The PayPal ATM debit card is included and there is multi-user access. The transaction fees for Premier and business accounts are as follows. If you have 0 to $3,000 total monthly payments, the fee is 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. If your total amount of monthly payments are $3,000 and one cent up to $10,000, the fee is 2.5% plus 30 cents per transaction. For $10,000 and one cent up to $100,000, the fee is 2.2% plus 30 cents per transaction. And for $100,000 and one cent and upwards, the fee is 1.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. Unlike merchant accounts, PayPal does not require a long-term contract, setup fees, or monthly startup or cancellation fees. How can you use it? There are four ways online merchants typically use PayPal to accept payments through their website. PayPal Website Payments Standard As with other PayPal methods, there are no additional fees associated with this package. Website Payments Standard can be integrated with an existing shopping cart and allows your customers to pay through PayPal even if they don't have a PayPal account themselves. For $20 per month, you can add the option to accept credit cards by phone, fax, mail or in person with PayPal's virtual terminal service. This feature is included in the PayPal Website Payments Pro package. PayPal Website Payments Pro This package includes all the features of the standard package and also provides the features of merchant accounts and gateways for less money. The Pro package is currently the only PayPal plan with a monthly fee, $20, but again requires no contract, startup or termination fees. The virtual terminal is included with this system and it is recommended that you use a shopping cart system already integrated with Website Payments Pro. You can find a directory of PayPal-ready shopping carts at solutions.paypal.com slash pro carts. PayPal email payments. This is a professional invoicing system available free with a Premier or business account. You can send email invoices to your customers, who then pay by clicking on the link within the message. The invoicing system is easy to set up. It takes about 10 minutes and customers do not need a PayPal account to make payments. You can also add virtual terminal to this service for $20 a month. Additional payment option. If you already accept credit cards on your website or you decide to sign up for a merchant account or other third-party processing service, you can add PayPal as an additional option for your customers. Typically, this is accomplished with customizable buttons you can install on your website. PayPal will generate the HTML code for you. When a customer clicks on the button, they will be taken to a page hosted on the PayPal server to sign in to their PayPal account. Many internet consumers who already use PayPal for eBay and other purchases may prefer this option. And you can increase your sales by adding a PayPal option to your website. How PayPal makes money with all these free services, you may be wondering how PayPal manages to be a profitable company. PayPal's profit system is arranged similarly to that of a bank. They earn interest from the float of the funds they manage. With over 100 million accounts, there are always funds sitting in some of them earning interest for PayPal. Of course, they also profit from the transaction fees and the monthly fees for their virtual terminal service. PayPal is unique in that it was the first funds transfer company created specifically to service the internet. Their commitment to quality and service has allowed them to become one of the giants of e-commerce. Shopping cart systems. What is it? 
A shopping cart system, sometimes referred to as an online storefront, is a type of website that allows customers to browse your products, select and store a purchase, and continue to shop without losing track of their purchases. Many shopping cart systems are searchable and span several dozen or hundred web pages. Perhaps the most well-known example of a website that uses a shopping cart system is Amazon.com. With millions of products to choose from, Amazon must have a way for shoppers to navigate their product pages, find what they're looking for, and save their selections without having to backtrack when they're ready to buy. Most shopping cart systems are not as complex as Amazon's. In fact, even websites with only one or two products offered can make use of a shopping cart system as it makes things easier on the customer when it comes to making a purchase. They can simply select the items they wish to purchase and click on a button or link labelled checkout or buy now or some similar sentiment to be redirected to an ordering page. Another important feature of shopping cart systems is the ability to calculate applicable tax and shipping and keep a running tally of order totals in progress. This is beneficial to the customer who does not have to try and keep track of how much money is being spent. How does it work? When e-commerce first came on the scene, online merchants had one option, HTML forms. Most forms were simple but efficient, as long as a customer was only purchasing one or two items. Any more and the order form had to appear on a separate page. And often customers who wanted to place orders for multiple items resorted to either trying to move back and forth between product pages and order pages, which was a good way to lose track of the order, or writing down the order information before reaching the order page. HTML forms evolved into shopping cart software. This enabled customers to save product information in a virtual shopping cart and check out several items simultaneously. Running order totals simplified the process further. Today, shopping cart software is most often a part of an overall package called storefront or store building software. In addition to the shopping cart portion, storefront software allows you to change prices, set up promotions and sales, add or delete products, manipulate graphics, and provide a secure server for ordering, all through your web browser when you're signed into your storefront account. For an example of full-featured storefront software, check out www.cafepress.com. Cafe Press provides free storefronts and lets account holders create customised products, like hats, coffee mugs, t-shirts and keychains, and offer the items for sale through a customisable storefront that can be integrated with an existing website. How can you use it? Let's take a look at the different functions of storefront software and determine how each of them might apply to your online business. Customers storefront view and product navigation. When customers arrive at your storefront, they will decide quickly whether they're interested in buying from you based on what they see. It's important to ensure that your storefront is as neat, efficient and well organized as any supermarket aisle with clear labels and obvious ways to check out. Online buyers expect three things from their internet shopping experience. Convenience, security, efficiency. If one or more of these things is missing, they are likely to look elsewhere for the same types of products. Simple navigation is also important to online shoppers. If they can't find what they're looking for fast, it's off to Google to look for another online merchant. Your navigation system will depend on the number of products you're offering and the complexity of your website pages. If you have 20 or fewer products, you can get away with one page that lists them all with brief descriptions and clickable thumbnail images that point to a full product page. Storefront software contains a database that keeps track of information such as product name, price, weight, descriptive text, SKU, and the product image file name. This makes it easy for you to display your products. For larger stores, navigation becomes a bit more complex. 
Many online stores with large product inventories use a combination of hierarchical or embedded department menus and a site-specific search engine to help customers locate specific products. The menus and search boxes are usually displayed on every page of the website for maximum customer convenience. The shopping cart. Your customers should be able to browse your website without losing track of their selections, particularly if you offer a lot of products. Shopping carts make this easy. Each of your products should feature a link that will allow them to add the item to their shopping cart and check out any time with their selected purchases. In addition to running totals, tax and shipping calculations, most shopping carts will allow customers to specify multiple numbers of the same product and to add or remove products at will. Advanced storefront software often features shopping carts that allow customers to select different varieties of the same product, such as a blue sweater and a white sweater, or a large mixing bowl and a small mixing bowl. Not every merchant will require these additional capabilities. Microsoft Commerce is a good example of an advanced storefront system with a fully customizable shopping cart. Order calculation. The running total storefront software keeps on orders through your website can vary according to the sophistication level. In general, the tab shown during the shopping process reflects the price of the items before tax and shipping and the additional costs are calculated at checkout. Tax is something of a sticky subject for online businesses. At this time, the official tax law is that online customers only pay tax when the business operates a physical location in the same state. If you own a franchise business or have stores in multiple states, calculating taxes can be difficult. Some storefront software allows for plugins, like Taxware Sales Use Tax System at www.taxware.com that automatically calculates real-time taxes in the United States and Canada. For shipping, the storefront software will likely use lookup tables, organised by shipping zones. The shipping calculation takes into account the weight, price and quantity of ordered items, as well as the distance to be shipped. Many programmes are now connecting to UPS's integrated Quick Cost Calculator tool at www.ups.com slash tools slash tools.html in order to determine the most accurate and up-to-date shipping costs for an order. Note that if your items are particularly large or heavy, it is probably a good idea to include an estimated shipping cost right on the product order page. This way, customers don't suffer from sticker shock when their order goes up $50 after shipping is added. Checkout. The majority of storefront software is designed to work with an SSL secure server when customers arrive at the checkout page. Most internet shoppers understand that the little padlock symbol in the lower right-hand corner of their web browser means their personal information will be protected, and most will not purchase with a credit card if they don't see that symbol. Another advantage of the storefront software checkout process is instant order confirmation. Most storefront programs will display an on-screen receipt once the order has been submitted. They will also send an email containing a copy of the receipt to the customer's email address. Without these confirmations, customers may feel they're sending their credit card information into cyberspace never to be seen again. Knowing their product or service is on the way will help you gain repeat business and word-of-mouth sales. Your back office. This is the part of storefront software your customer never sees. A back office web browser interface allows you to make changes to your website storefront without installing software on your computer or making changes to your HTML template. It's easier than ever for merchants to maintain and operate an online store right from their computers. Following are the primary tasks associated with your back office. Tracking shoppers. One of the functions of the back office is to keep track of individual shoppers, so the software can remember which products 
go into whose shopping carts. This is generally accomplished in one of three ways. Cookies. Some shopping cart programs track visitors with a small computer file called a cookie, which contains the cart number. This file remains on the visitor's hard drive while they are on your website. This is the most popular method for tracking shoppers, but some internet users disable cookies on their browsers because the files can sometimes be used by hackers to harvest personal information. Temporary IP number. This is a number automatically assigned to a user who is logged on to the internet. The IP number is not visible to visitors, but it can be read by most storefront software. Many software programs use this method of identification when a visitor's browser is set not to accept cookies. Randomly generated cart number. Shopping cart software that uses this tracking system adds a randomly generated number to the end of the URL that appears in the browser's address field. The number is sticky. It stays on the URL for every page visited by the customer assigned to it. There is another good reason for you as a merchant to keep track of your shoppers, and that's repeat business. Some storefront software keeps a database of customers who visit your website and records information such as how long each visitor stayed, which products they viewed, which products they bought, and whether they have agreed to receive special offers or discounts from your business via email. Other types of software includes a membership feature that offers discounts or free items to any shopper who agrees to receive promotional mailings or sign up for a list. Amazon uses software that keeps track of customers and what they view, so that whenever a shopper returns to the website, they are greeted with their name and a handful of special selections they may be interested in, based on their past views and purchases. This type of customer tracking is available in advanced storefront software products, such as Microsoft Commerce and Intershop Online at www.intershop.com. Order pickup and account integration. The security of your website is generally visible to the customer only on the order placement page. However, your customer's security may be compromised at the back end if you don't have SSL protection on your order pickup area. If you use storefront software and either view orders on the screen for printing or download the files into a program like Microsoft Excel to import into your fulfillment system, you will need a secure server for this process. Note that if you use a third-party processor for credit card transactions, you won't be dealing directly with customers' credit card numbers and personal information. Most storefront software does provide a secure means for picking up orders online. Many also allow for integration with real-time credit card authorization systems, such as merchant accounts and third-party processors that allow integration, such as PayPal. When it comes to integration with your accounting system, you may have some trouble as the technology is still in its early stages. Many online merchants still print out transaction records and manually rekey the information into an order fulfillment system for processing. However, there are some storefront software programs that will integrate readily with QuickBooks or EDI, Electronic Data Interchange Format, which bridges account systems in B2B transactions. Adding and editing products. Any good business will make constant changes to their product offerings, details, prices and special promotions. At the start of e-commerce, adding products or changing the aspects of an existing product meant going into the website template and changing the HTML code. Modern storefront software eliminates the hassle of HTML coding and makes changing the product listings on your website far easier. There are generally two ways to set up your products with storefront software. Database upload. Through this process, you maintain your product database on your computer's hard drive. When you make changes to the database, transferring the changes to your website is a simple matter of uploading the entire database periodically. This automatically updates your website and incorporates any changes you've made. If you are using a Windows-based environment, 
you will likely upload through a Microsoft Access database. Unix operating systems generally use comma or tab delimited files for storefront databases. Large stores with a wide variety of products commonly use the database method. Browser-based maintenance The latest storefront software maintains your product database on your ISP server. To make changes to your website with this type of software, you simply log into your owner account and access the back office on your web browser. Smaller online stores are likely to employ browser-based maintenance as it is easy to access and view the entire database online. The Yahoo Store program at store.yahoo.com is an example of a storefront service that uses browser-based maintenance. Sales and Promotions Another function of your back office is the ability to appoint sales and promotions to certain products or initiate store-wide discounts for certain customer classes, such as those who order $50 or more in a single order or returning customers. Graphics uploading and placement Graphics often play a large role in e-commerce. Since you are not running a physical store where customers can see and handle items, it is important to let your visitors know what your products look like. Even books and e-books should have cover graphics displayed. Most storefront software will allow you to upload and place your own graphics on your website. Some software, such as the Yahoo Store program, will automatically generate thumbnail images and colour headline graphics for each product you enter into the database. The thumbnails can then be placed on a single page and linked to the fully detailed individual product page.